while the weather is beautiful, we're just trying to get as far north. It seems the further north you go in Australia, things get better. Fish get bigger, everything gets a little bit wilder. So that's what we're in search of. So let's get some miles under the belt and head north. As we're cruising through the islands here, we're always looking at the depth sounder to see if we go over any fish or anything like that. We've just gone over one sounding that looks very promising. It looks almost like uh, a shipwreck or something down there and fish love shipwrecks. So we're going to drop a jig and see if we can catch some dinner. What is it? Is it a big cobia? Oh my God, is it a cobia? It's a cobia, yeah. Woohoo! Look at it, it's a beauty. Oh, we might have got a bit excited a bit early. Holy moly! These new back to basics jigs are, are working. Are working. That just went straight down on top of him and I didn't even jig it. He just engulfed it. Too big for us. Maybe eh? Too big for us to eat. We might try catch and release him. I wasn't sure what it was gonna be. It swam up to the surface. Uh, so I, to be honest, I, I did have a feeling it was a cobia. That's yeah. what they do. Like you can feel they're heavy, but they'll swim up to the surface. And then now they fight and fight and fight. Oh, look at him. Holy moly, he's huge. It's so big. He's a beauty. <gasps> I thought it was a shark at the beginning. It's so big. They look like one, don't they? Maybe this is the one we saw swimming with that humpback oh, whale. Oh, the whale. That's the biggest cobia I've ever seen. Whopper, hey. Whoa, watch your finger. Oh, he's just hooked. He's just hooked, it's gonna break off. <laughs> Something broke. Something broke. Oh, it's hard because at this point the, the easy thing would be to gaff him and get him on board the boat, but I'm trying to get him on and there is slippery fish to hand on that that didn't go too well. It's on a death roll. Yes. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> Holy moly, no wonder he was so strong. He's huge, man. Look at the size of that. That's a giant cobia. He's far too big for us, so I'm gonna let him go. Bye, Mr. Cobia. See you, mate. Thanks for the epic battle. Off he goes. <laughs> that was awesome, but now we've got to catch something a little bit smaller that we can actually have for dinner. This is the jig that he swallowed. You can see on these Back to Basics jigs, they've got these massive hooks. For that exact reason, when you catch a fish bigger than what you're expecting, you've got a chance of landing it. Big hooks, great jigs. All right, your turn, friend. Catch us something a little bit smaller for dinner. Cool. Get a hit. Oh. oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, friend. Good stuff. What? Oh. oh. What do you reckon? Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Is he down deep still? Yeah. It's a good fish. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh nice, nice. This might be our friend. This Keep going, keep going. What do we got? It's oh, it's a big cod. <laughs> no. Nah. Hey. Beautiful gold spot cod. <laughs> Look at that. He just smashed that back to basics jig. Hooked him perfectly. Yeah, there gold he is. spot cod for dinner. Beautiful. Jeez, he's a uh, beauty, isn't he? So nice. Home sweet home. Yeah, there's some bombies everywhere. Like. One. Straight off the beach into coral. Yeah, straight from the beach. It's deep right away. You might have to anchor on the other side. Look at the drop off there. It's really cool checking out all these little islands as we go. They've all got something a little bit different to offer. This one is very steep. So there's quite a high mountain almost behind us there which has got beautiful rainforest on it. And then it comes down to the drop off here in the water. It gets really deep, really quite quickly. So that gives us a good chance at some big fish. And that's also the reason why there's that beautiful coral life just here. No inquiries yet? A lot of bait. Oh, is there? Oh, nice. Oh, it's a big butt. Dinner time. Let's go and fillet this fish and then cook up before the sun goes down early dinner <laughs> that's a challenge it's, it's what have we got just, two minutes just one thing at all
All right, we've got a, a gold spot estuary cod, they're called. So they grow up in the estuaries, but once they get about this size and get a bit bigger, they leave the estuaries, come out to the islands. And the thing that's kind of recognizable about them underwater, they've got this striking green eye that really stands out underwater. And they're actually very, very nice eating. I think they're quite underrated. So at this size, they do get very big and then they're, they're not great eating when they're huge, but this size is just right. So guys, all the gear we use here, the jigs we use to catch the fish, the knives we use to fill them, the bikinis, friends, wears, uh, they're all available on our online stores. The link is in the description. Uh, that is a way of not only getting some cool gear, but also helping fund these trips, fuel these trips. So thanks for the support if you're into that. Beautiful. Nice. <gasps> ah! No, 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 no. Oh. All right, tonight in the Back to Basic Beach Kitchen, we're having fish and chips with the estuary gold spot cod. And then we're off to bed because we are exhausted, <laughs> but we'll see you bright and early in the morning. Yeah, we sure will, guys. Don't go anywhere. This episode will continue in the morning and it's just going to get better and better the further we go north. We're super excited. We've actually got a glassy day forecast tomorrow, so it's going to be epic. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm. You finished all your chips. Get out of it. <laughs> The chips were amazing, well done. And we are ready to go to the next island. What a beautiful glassy morning. We're going to be heading north and I think we're a good chance at seeing some humpback whales today. This time of the year they're everywhere. It's so flat and calm we'll be able to see their blow spurts from miles away. And we're actually going to get out right out to the outer Great Barrier Reef today. So we're excited. Today is going to be awesome. Let's do it. Away we go. Just cruising along, we've found a big floating log on the surface. Something like that, it attracts all the little fish around it, and then of course the bigger fish come as well. Fran's gonna cast the, the lure. Just a floating bit of driftwood, I think. Yep. No fish? Yep, to the next stop. To the next stop. A couple of dolphins have just come over and playing in our waves. There's two pretty small ones, really small. Check that out, that's awesome, eh? It looks like they're trying to make love. So it's been found that dolphins are one of the only other animals, apart from the primates, that actually make love for the purpose of pleasure rather than reproduction. These two guys are living their best life, just cruising around the reef and making love all day. What a life that'd be. So today we've got about a hundred mile run actually to get up to the next island where we want to camp, but we've made a bit of a detour out to this outer reef spot because this is kind of thought of as the best black marlin fishery in the world. So uh, it's worth coming out here and trying our luck. And this year we're a little bit better equipped than when we came up the coast a few years ago. So we've got a bigger reel, stronger rods. You never know, we might catch a marlin out here. It was just little mag tuna jumping over here. And we're on! <laughs> so we're hoping for a yellow fin, hoping not a mac tuna, but we'll see how we go. What is it? What is it? Little. It's only little. A moment of truth. Come on, man. What is it? Oh, yeah, I think a it's a yellow fin. It's definitely a tuna of some sort. It's a tuna of some sort. It's sort of foul hook, which is making him very heavy. Oh, I can't quite tell. Oh, it's a yellow food, Fred. Oh get, wait, can you get the gap? Quick, quick, quick! Where is it? Maybe the net, the net. Get him in the net. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes! Oh. What a beauty! <laughs> we just caught ourselves a yellow fin tuna! Yes! Delicious sashimi! Well done. <laughs> no. I actually bought all the ingredients to make sushi for this exact this day. <laughs> Perfect. I'm so excited. All right, what's the ID? <laughs> Upon closer inspection, we might have caught ourselves a northern bluefin, or these guys are also called a long-tailed tuna. When eaten fresh, they're beautiful. So we're gonna sashimi him anyway. We'll have to save the marlin for another time, but now we've got a lot of miles to go, so we're gonna get steaming. But it's about the middle of the day now, so I think we can make time for a quick little stop here on the reef, 
have a bit of a swim, a bit of a fish. It'll just be bloody beautiful in there at the moment. And then we've got to keep going. It's hard to just drive past so many reefs and so many good spots. So we've just pulled in here and we've probably got 15 minutes to have a bit of a cast, have a swim to cool down and then we'll keep going. Oh, for lunch, we've just got some leftovers of that gold spot estuary cod. But last night, we forgot to give the rating of the fish, didn't we? So, Fran, what would you rate the fish? Three out of five, but if it wasn't cooked well, that's pretty good. But difficulty, maybe a one out of five. <laughs> They're pretty easy to spear. They just sit there and look at you yeah. with like their big mouth open. So, all right, locking it in. Difficulty, one out of five. Taste? Two and a half. Two and a half out of five. Hmm, yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of miles to go to get to where we want to camp tonight, so we're going to keep moving. Uh, if we make it in good time there, there is a pretty special spot up that way that I'd like to check out. Fingers crossed we make it there in time. There was just a huge explosion in front of the boat, but there's a mother teaching its calf how to breach here. And it's amazing when they get up in the air, it's like they sort of hang and everything else slows down. They come down with such force. It's, it's this huge eruption, but pretty amazing. What happened? Drones on boats. Unfortunately, we've had a bit of an incident. I'm gonna get the first deck hit up. This should do. All right, we just made it to the reef where the special spot Jack was talking about is. But we're gonna have to navigate through some bombing. So I'm sitting at the front and giving Jack directions. It's one of the lowest tides of the year right now. So all the reefs actually out of water. It's a bit of a, an obstacle course getting in, but it looks like there's a channel that way. So don't go straight, go that way. Yeah. This is a many shallow bomb. Yeah? That expert navigating or a fluke? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we just made it to a special spot. I don't think you can see it. It's just over there. I'm gonna gear up and take you down with me. All right. All right. <laughs> For now, Fran's just having a bit of a swim around. It'll be interesting to, to hear what she's seeing under there. We're almost there. Just behind me. There is so many giant clams. Oh, I don't know. This is indeed an aeroplane wreck. So back during World War II, there's a whole bunch of planes came down in between here where we are on the east coast of Australia, all the way up to Papua New Guinea for a range of different reasons. And they've all kind of got their fascinating own stories. There's a whole bunch situated actually on the coast of Australia. There's a couple on the islands and in the waters around it. But this is the only one I'm aware of that's on the outer Great Barrier Reef. Shipwrecks in general are, are pretty fascinating, aren't they? They make for an amazing place to explore and dive. And to have this one here nestled on the Great Barrier Reef where nature is now taking back over, there's giant clams and all sorts of coral growing over, is, is pretty amazing. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. I agree, Fran. Yum, yum. Wow. 
What a day. So nice being back out here on the reef, hey friends. Oh, I'm so happy. Right, so we have decided to sleep on board because it's uh, quite late. It's almost sunset and we're not going to make it in time to the island. So we're going to sleep on board and have another reef day tomorrow. Fingers crossed the weather just stays as it is. Our first sleep on board, hey? Exciting. All right, the off cuts are going to be sundowners. Sashimi. Straight off the bone, nice and fresh. Hmm. <laughs> so what are you doing, Jack? So we are chopping the bits up into about that size and that is going to get wrapped in a bit of seaweed with other bits and pieces and become sushi. And the rest will cook it as uh, steaks for lunch tomorrow. Yeah, sounds good. Leftovers for lunch. I've been invited up to Sundowners and Entree on the top deck. <laughs> La di da. <laughs> Look at that. If anyone's been here since the Great Adventure 1, you may remember we tried to sleep out of the reef on the Saltadingo. I just had the most horrible night. At that point, we'd run out of water and the water we had was uh, like it had wheat, seaweed all through it, it was half salt water, so we got incredibly sick. It was a horrible scene, but this time around it's uh, a far more pleasant afternoon. Cheers. Cheers. Yum. It was a perfect sized tuna for us, eh? The last light for the day. I was doing a bit of rigging, rigging up gear tomorrow because we might get a chance to do some blue water spearing tomorrow. And Fran's dinner is coming along, hey? There's a hell of a lot of love involved there. So we realized I forgot to buy seaweed. <laughs> Crucial ingredient in yep. sushi. <laughs> sushi. So I'm just gonna fry up this rice and we got poke board just behind you there, ready no. to go. We're getting there anyway. Fran's managed to salvage a, a pretty impressive meal nonetheless. Stand by, it's not quite ready yet. Yum. What have we got, Fran? All right, tonight in the Back to Basic Beach Kitchen on a very rolled boat, we got crispy uh, sushi with tuna, sweet chili, and kiwi mayo. That's it. And then a poke bowl. With chickpeas, onions, rice, olive oil. Amazing, Fran, you've done amazingly well. Guys, in case you haven't been able to tell, the anchorage has gotten really rolly now the tide's come in, so thumbs up for Fran cooking in these conditions. So good. Good? This is delicious. Nice. Got to rate you for the long tail tuna. Five out of five. Five out of five? Is that our first five? Wow. Yeah. Difficulty? Five. Look at that. That wouldn't look out of place at a fancy restaurant. You Amazing, Fran. Oh, wow. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it uh, as much as we did. The last couple of days, we've traveled a long way, 200 miles in the last two days. And that, the whole point of that is to get up north, where we reckon it's better, everything's bigger, it's wilder. So stick with us over the next few episodes. Subscribe if you're new here, and we'll share it all with you. See you tomorrow. See ya. <laughs>